The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. So I have to be a little careful how I talk about this because I'm still under NDA for like one more day when this episode comes out. But I was on set for something a couple days before Thanksgiving. I was playing a licensed character. I was getting into hair and makeup at like 7.15 in the morning and the HMU was like, oh, and then here are your colored contacts for your character because the character is known for having like not naturally occurring eye color. Mm. And that wasn't brought up to me that I'd be wearing colored contacts. And I was like, just so you know, I am seriously... Like, can't see anything if it's beyond my nose level of vision impaired without my contacts. And I was like, so just, you know, like, I'll wear them, but it'll probably be, like, really unsafe. And, like, I'm not sure how well I'll be able to do, like, choreography. I don't even know if I'll be able to see, like, where the camera is or, like, where my mark is. And just, like, you know, I'll roll with it. But I just want to be really upfront about the challenges that might present if I wear these contacts. And the HMU was like, oh, hmm, yeah, we don't want you to be unsafe. And so she started running that up the chain of command. And the producer was like, oh, yeah, Kim, if it's a safety issue, don't worry. We'll just um, adjust your eye color in post. And I was like, "Okay, excellent. 30 minutes later, that same producer came back and was like, yeah, we just talked to the VFX guys and it's going to be way too expensive to color correct your eyes. (laughs) Oh, oh, no. (laughs) So... (laughs) Oh, my heart, as soon as he said that, like, oh, we'll just take care of it in post. And I was like, the people who do post-production know about this. (laughs) So they're like, yeah, you're going to have to suck it up and wear the color contacts. Um, And I was like, okay. And they're like, did you happen to bring your glasses with you? And I was like, no, I didn't because I was not aware that I was going to be wearing contacts today. So they sent a PA to my house to get my glasses for me. I'm surprised that Virgil didn't kill them, like that they would have had to send an additional PA to recover the body of the original lost PA. Send two PAs, one with a shield and one with a spear. (laughs) (laughs) So for for like a 12 hour shoot, I was wearing color contacts and could see nothing. They had to affix like a bright LED light to the front of the camera so that I could see where the camera was by just sort of looking into the obnoxiously bright light. (laughs) Um, And my glasses were sitting just off stage on like an Apple box that the PA had to keep giving to me. But for the most part, it was such a pain to be- to put the glasses back on that I was led everywhere to and from set by a PA. All that being said, it was a lovely experience. It was just, uh, <laughs> I, but my sort of visual memory of it is almost nothing because I saw zero percent of the shoot. <laughs> In the future, if you see whatever it was that Kim just did, know that when she's looking at you at home in the camera, no, she's not. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. What was, it, what was it like being on the set? It sounded great. Like... <laughs> the sounds, the smells. Ugh, Hollywood, right? I love it. I know nothing about like film and television production, but that is so wild to me that you could get there and they just expect you to be able to wear non-prescription colored contacts. God, it seems like there'd be some redundancy to prevent this thing from happening. (laughs) It was a really quick shoot. Like the whole thing came together in like two weeks. So I don't think even if they uh, even had I known about it, there probably wouldn't have been enough time to get something in my prescription. And my prescription is strong. For those of you who wear contacts, it's negative eight in both eyes. That is nice. (laughs) You can see backwards at this point. (laughs) Yeah, right. You can see into the past. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Real quick, too, on this subject. What was the name of this again? (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I was close. I could feel it. <laughs> I'll tell you if you just bleep it out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> then they're going to know, though, that you violated the NDA. I guess technically they can't know because it was bleeped out. That's true. It That's could true. be a joke. She might have been like... <laughs> bleep that out. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely bleep that out. <laughs> well known for having unnaturally bright eyes. Yes. <laughs> Long John Silver. <laughs> uh, it was for... Please bleep all of these the Absolutely. same. Please yeah. bleep every instance of 
including this one and a <laughs> I read a thing about like people's zombie apocalypse prep recently. One person said like, "Oh, I'd go to the nearest doctor's offices I could and scavenge like all of the contact lenses." Oh. Because they've always got like samples and all the common prescriptions and like one, if you need them, get them, and two, if other people need them, you're the contacts dealer now. Nice. I was like, that's great, except Kim would be doomed because they probably don't just carry samples in her prescription. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Where is that like Mad Max side story about the eye dealer who is just the guy who's got tons of contacts and prescription glasses, and that's how he's made his fortune and gets his water? Oh, that was a lot more innocent than I thought you were going to do. Like, I <laughs> thought you were going to say, like, here, I've got a nice... 2020 set of eyes if you want to put it into your own damn yeah, skull. I'm also a surgeon. Yeah, like, <laughs> which I'll also bleep out. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any questions about our time in Starhold, you've got just a couple more days to submit those to us. Again, you can send those to us at the cast at the show podcast.com or through the contact us form on the website. Or if you're on the Discord, you can post those inside of the spoilers chat. And um, with that, it's time to get into the episode. I'm going to climb up one of these bookshelves so that I can get access to the ceiling and try and, like, yank down a light fixture and get into the opening beyond it, see if I can make my way up into this middle space. You're able to feel around and keep pushing until you find a piece that gives way. And as you force it open, it falls over to the side, and you come out into this exact same room. And you are standing in the corner of it looking at you. I'm getting strange readings coming from there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Initiate protocol 712. And as that is said in this room, you see a timer pop up in the corner of the monitor. Battery chamber unlocking. <gasps> 60 minutes. And it begins to count down. Huh. I guess that might be good. I'm going to move down that hall then. You walk down that hallway and turn the corner and this room is a mess. You see some large glass containers some of them are broken and some of them are holding immortal eggs there's a computer in the corner of the room and you peer at the screen and it seems like the two remaining immortal eggs were getting ready to hatch but they were put into a medically induced sleep to slow that process and it has a number of life sign readouts on it and below that is a flashing indicator that reads sedative reserves depleted oh great Great, 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 great. I'm looking around. I want to see if there's signs of, like, my friends being injured in this fight. Yes. You see some blood stains. You see little bits of clothing. Some of it looks like your clothing. Huh. Somebody else using a tactical... How did they find... This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I am going to back out of the room, go back to the panel, and uh, step on it. As you step on the panel, it rotates, and it stops facing a hallway. And there are two Jakes standing there looking at it. Holding hands. They're holding hands like, like the twins in The Shining. Yes, they look like the twins from The Shining. <laughs> but 6'2". <six> <laughs> I, I'm just, like, darting the gun back and forth between them. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 no. Please, no. Why not? We're, <laughs> this is, sounds bad, but we're Jake. And it's odd because it seems like they are both on the same page, so they are speaking in perfect unison. <laughs> Why are you dressed like vampires? Space vampires. I found Nash's spacesuit in like his bedroom here. That was a while ago though. Where have you been? Uh I'm like looking at him and then back to the other and back to the other. Um, I fell into a like a hole that was a room with a message from Nash that was like, suck it, nerds. What? When? When I left you guys. I I did I got in a little tiny cubby thing right and i spun and like there's a bright flash and like i felt like i was falling and then i woke up why are there two of you oh my god okay there was oh no oh man you weren't the real you the whole time huh what does that mean oh buddy there's um there's clones and <laughs> me and the other me like just kind of point thumbs at each other hey tass why don't you roll get a feeling <laughs> <laughs> not bad Hey, Taz, why don't you take three stress? <laughs> Eight. So you can ask Jake one question and he will answer honestly. Either of them. Wh which? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, there's only there's one there's only one question here that could possibly going through my panicked mind are they being honest yes fully to the best of their ability i very slowly put the gun onto my back okay 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 where's everyone else and are you both clones trying to make your way in this wild world we live in <laughs> is one of you the original how do we know please please calm me down okay we don't know who's the original if either of us that's why we're like sticking together and we're trying to find everybody else in the hopes that this can be solved so we're headed this way i just like point <laughs> ideally uh or at least we were going to head that way we don't know where everybody else is and so both of us remember being dropped off in a room like a, like a while ago and then nobody ever came back for us so we don't actually know like where anyone is or what has happened in the meantime did you fight some immortals we didn't like fight immortals but we are aware of the fighting of immortals okay okay uh vague but okay like uh you, you and, and Megan fought Immortals. Uh-huh. A different you. Yeah, good, great. And then we showed up on the scene afterwards. And then actually, a you and a me, with the, when the clones are hurt and they touch each other, they schlorp and they turn into like a, a terrible monstrosity that's uncontrollable and bloodthirsty. And we did that. <laughs> I'm like looking them over to see if either of them are injured. No, they are both completely fine. Okay, okay. So, I mean... I could like cut both of your hands and you guys could touch each other and that would answer if you're both clones. That would, although one thing we haven't encountered yet, I think, is the real one of us touching a clone one of us. So I also don't know how that would work. Okay, then let's go make sure that the girls are okay somewhere and then sort it out. Yeah, just like, I don't know, be careful who you touch, I guess, like just in case. Yeah, I usually kind of live by that. <laughs> Okay, let's go. We haven't been this way yet. All right, hop in. All right, you step on the panel inside of the first circle. It rotates once. There's a wall. It rotates twice. And there is a hallway that leads into a room that is almost entirely dark. Uh, and standing in that hallway is Tass. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, see? Here's another you. And it seems like you're the or the original you because you remember like from the very beginning when we lost track of you here. Hey, wait. Wait a minute. I remember everything. What are you talking about? What do you remember? Leaving you guys in a hallway. Why are there two of you wearing a vampire cape? How long has it been by your perception since you left us in a hallway? It was like a minute ago. Okay, let's rip this band-aid off again. There's clones, and I suspect that you are one of them. One of us is one of them as well. You're relatively fresh because a lot of time has passed since you actually originally stepped into that hallway. I suspect this one is like the prime you, and I point to the one we just found in the hallway. And for the moment, I think we all just need to kind of stick together and not make physical contact until we find the rest of the squad. I mean, hey, we've got two of each of us right here. I think we could answer some stuff pretty quick. That's true. I mean, it seems... Okay, we're not hurt right now, the me's gesture between each other, which means, like, we wouldn't... You know, nothing would go weird if one of us touched... Like, if we touched each other or somebody else who was uninjured, because you're both uninjured, right? We both say right. So we'd have to, like, do damage to ourselves, and that would answer a question, but right now... We're safe and with additional numbers. And it seems like this could work in our advantage for the moment. I don't feel like we should jump the gun on this. So wait, but but you said that they like they like bundle up when they do if like a, attach. Yeah, if a hurt if a hurt clone touches another clone, hurt or no, I think, then they sh they smush together and they become a monster. So we want to like just keep going and building up a bunch of us before that happens? I mean, that's a good point also. You're making a lot of sense. Okay. What, like, I'll prick fingers and shake hands, everybody? Yeah, I think so. I think, what do you think, me? I, god damn, I don't know. Okay, okay, here's what we do. We set our weapons aside right over here. We prick our fingers, and we all do the little tappy tap. And if somebody starts sucking into each other, then the ones that are okay, grab your guns and we deal with it, yeah? I've just got a glove, but yeah, I'll grab your gun. Yeah, I mean, there'll be two of them, I guess. Yeah, I'll grab the gun of you that presumably somebody's not using anymore. If we're all reasonably sure we're the one that's the, the prime, right, then we all kind of want to take this gamble, right? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm me. I'm fine. Yes, let's do this, clone. I want to look around at the dark room that I recognize to be the immunization chamber, right? Yeah, and you can see that along the ground, part of the wall has been worked away and some of the wires frayed at, and there are some additional components attached into it, but the whole room seems to be shut down. Does it seem like I could get it up and running again, even for a round? I don't think so. I feel like in the past... We have not had the opportunity to use a repair and advanced item to fix something that the other one of us broke. Fix like a that was her her pick. Yeah. So I don't think so. Okay. Um. Then yeah, I think I'm kind of looking around and I'm like, man, it's a shame. Some of the stuff in here could probably answer this for us. I feel like we should go find the others first. And if anything bad happens to one of us, like you know, if one of us does get hurt, then maybe we like jump into this plan. But right now, while we're all uninjured. Let's find the others, see if they have any insight that we don't have, because a lot of time might have passed here. I mean, it was only about a minute, but yeah. <laughs> it was so many minutes. It was so many <laughs> more minutes than you think. No, but I agree. I think priority one, really, I think we can all collectively agree. We want to make sure that the girls are still alive. Yeah. Oh, also, there's like a 60-minute timer, and I think Nash <laughs> has set the battery room to open, and I don't really know. Like, we need to get in there anyway, but that makes it seem like something devastating is going to happen. So, yeah, let's find the others. You know, we might all of us together need to get out of here before we, like, resolve some stuff. Didn't open with that. No, I'm sorry. A lot's going on. My mind is uh, sort of in two places at once. Hey, Yay, and me and my clone high five. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice. Wonder oh, twins. That- <laughs> all right. Let's. God, that's. I hadn't thought about that either. We have got to make sure Carrington's okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, God, let's go. All four of us just sprinting. (laughs) (laughs) Megan, you have just finished up the work in your workshop, and you hear Carrington. Uh, I think you're going to want to see this. I grab the detector, and I head out. What? What's going on? And you look out the little window by the door, and there are two Jakes and two Tasses standing outside the door. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh... Shit. All right. Back up. And we have planned this. All four of us in unison go... Come play with us. <laughs> Jacob? Back away from the door. Hi, guys. Yeah. Many, many steps back. Hey, what's the password? Avocado. No. Ah, oh, damn it. I was certain that they would have went with that. I have no idea. Okay. Checks out. Yeah. I guess. Just for funsies, I'm going to use a clone detector on Carrington, just to make sure. It does not go off. Okay, cool. I use it on Kim. It, again, does not go off. And I use it on myself. The same. Well, I guess this doesn't prove that it works. Because we didn't think that <laughs> we didn't think we we're clones, but we know we're not clones. So okay, all right, uh, cool. And I open the door and go out. Okay, hi guys. Hi. 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 So hi. obviously you know there are clones, so we can skip that part. Uh, I made a clone detector so we can figure out for sure if one of you. I'm really hoping one of the both of you is the real ones. Because I'm the real. No, and we're like yeah, no, stop, each other. Task, stop talking. All right, I'm really sorry. I'm really stressed out, but we're going to have to figure out which ones of you are clones, and and this is going to be bad. Wait, 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 wait. What's the plan when we know who's who? Yeah, because, like, I don't want to die either way. You know, very much same. Yeah, like, and I mean, you all seem chill, so it's not like we're going to just start blasting at each other, right? No, I mean, I ooh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just now thinking of the ramifications of bringing back two tasses into our world, do both of you become the chosen? Did they turn into something else as they go through the portal? Like, we have no idea what Nash has set up for these clones to be in a different place. Oh, speaking of Nash, we picked up, it looked like Noelle. Did you guys know that part Like, no, part of Noelle is here? Yeah, we, yes, yeah, we yes. had to finish getting her. What, what, what oh. do you mean? Uh, she picked up, like, an incoming transmission, and it sounded like Nash... Basically being like, oh, something weird is going on there. Initiate this protocol. And then there was a countdown timer for when the room with the, with the battery is going <gasps> to open. No! Which no, is no, no, probably no. what? How long? How long? Uh, got like uh, Maybe like a little over half hour at this point. Oh, my God. 35. Megan, we have no time. <gasps> Do the thing. Do the thing. Figure out who's a clone. What's happening? Okay. Uh, hold out your hands. Oh, God. Uh, both of our hands go out. And I just run the scanner over all of them. Yeah. You've got a clone Tass, a real Tass, a clone Jake, and a real Jake. And for the listeners, it was the Tass who the two Jakes found and the Jake that came out of the floor. (laughs) Tunnel Jake. (laughs) Tunnel Tunnel, Jake. Tunnel Jake. Okay, uh, I pull the real ones away. Okay, you guys are the originals. I look at the other ones. I'm sorry, you're clones. Okay, what is the last thing you remember? Who? (laughs) 
I am looking at the real the real boys. What, like with you guys? Yes, I need to figure out how long ago we lost you. Over an hour at least. I don't know. I When I walked away, I, I jumped in the thing and it spun a little cubby and there's a bright light and I was in a like a little fucking jail cell, a little oubliette below somewhere. So since we got here, Tess? Yes. Oh shit, I okay. I dug my way out of that shit and found them and here we are. Okay, Jake, what do you remember? Up to getting into the library and then saying that I would wait for you guys to come back. Okay, all right. How about this? I'm just going to pitch this because we don't do anything fast. I trust you. Tell me where to go, what to do, what to shoot out, what to grab, what to drive. Yes. And let's Let's get the show on the road. We need to grab Noelle and get her off the ship. Okay. Uh, And I look at the clones. Will you help us carry computer parts? (laughs) I mean, yes, this seems like world stakes, but I would love to come back to what's going to happen to us at the end of this because I still don't want to die. I would love that too. And if that's still a problem that we have to face when we're able to leave here, then we will do it at that time. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's just kind of hope that we mutate along the way. No, 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 no. I don't want you to mutate, but it might happen. Everybody has been mutating and never expect anyone to. We got to go. There is somebody in the battery room. We super don't want to kill anybody. So just don't get hurt. And if you get hurt, don't touch another clone. What I'm saying is... Is there is somebody in the battery room, and if she is let out in 35 minutes, we will all die if we're still here. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Yep, running. Yep, both of us. All right, so the six of you head out of the hangar and through the immunization room into the circle, and you make your way around and through the appropriate hallways, and you arrive at the chamber where the remnants of Noelle are. Uh, you're now able to get the rest of her in one trip. Yeah. With all six of you. Oh, thank goodness. Many hands make light work. You can see that the countdown timer has 29 minutes left. And as you grab the rest of her components, she does power down. Um, She is no longer up and running, so you're going to have to kind of keep mental track of what time you think you got left. Yeah, I think I sync up with that with, like, my phone or whatever, like, as it's going down. and be like, all right, we're on. Okay. Let's go, let's go. All right, and you all head back to the hangar and deposit Noel inside of the ship. What are you doing now? Okay, so what the plan was, was to put a bomb in a specific room that, Jake, you were going to fly up and try and figure out what the best place to get her to was, put a bomb in that room, and when she gets there, blast her into space. I don't know how much time we have for all of that now, though. I need to make a bomb, though. (laughs) All right, well, good thing we can do both. If you have your workshop here, let's jump in the ship, let's take a look around, find our spot, and then go from there, yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, let's get on that. Uh, I want to hand Megan my bag of smoke bombs. In case you need materials, I don't know. And clone me hands over that big gun. I don't know that I'll get a chance to use it or live through this, but I hope it helps. I think clone Jake looks at clone Tass and is like, we could head back in there, and if nothing else, when our time comes, we could buy a lot of time for them. No, I hate this. God, that's morbid, but very, very true. If we're able to get you out of here, we're going to try to get you out of here. Let's just see what we see and see how much time we have left. Break. All right, so you all are on the ship. Megan is in her workshop. Jake Prime is piloting the ship? Yes. Okay. I think there is a scuffle over the controls. Yeah. (laughs) All right, you fire up the ship and you start to pull the ship out of the hangar. As you get to a distance to allow yourself to see the entirety of the station as well as the surrounding area, there is a brief moment where you pass through that field Clone Jake and Clone Tass both get very severe looks on their faces as their bodies start to shift and rapidly decompose and then melt onto the ground. No! Oh, man. Megan, in your workshop, in this moment of trying to build this bomb, I think you've got two options here because we've done a couple of different things as you create things. Um, This is a dangerous situation. You're trying to build a bomb on the ship in space. So it could be an act under fire. Or you could go the time option Roll a d6 and subtract your tech for how long it's going to take you to build. So worst case scenario, it would take you 40 minutes. And how much time do we have left? 25. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) So it works out. The math works out. And then worst case scenario with Act Under Fire, I blow us up. Yeah. 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 I think ever since Jake told us that there was a countdown to that room being opened, I've just been mentally imagining a timer and knowing that we need to get this done It needs to be done right, and it needs to be done quickly. There's no room for mistakes, and there's no time to make sure that it's done right. It's got to be act under fire. All right, roll it. With my negative one, that's a 10. Ooh. Nice. All right. Oh, my God. 
you are able to create a bomb from the things in your workshop as well as the pieces that have been given to you by the group that you are certain, uh, while it will not destroy the black metal, will destroy the metal that makes up the whole of most of this station. So I think the only question about this bomb is, how does it work? Like, is it on a timer? Is it a motion sensor? Is it remote? How do you want this to detonate? Right. Well, I think a timer is going to be dangerous because that seems pretty precise and we are not good with time. Um, a remote, again, would be difficult because we can't see when she's in there. So I think the way that I'm going to set this up is essentially armed. It's like, uh, you know, you push this button and it goes through a cycle. And then once that cycle finishes, the next thing it detects, it sets it off. Yeah, that's fair. I think that, um, you know, you never got to use your your turret and that's exactly what it did was it sensed movement and shot at it so i think you probably have some of those components left over that you could put them into the bomb so that it does what the turret did nice jake in the driver's seat of the ship you've already used your move to to have this knowledge where do you want to send allison you know do you want to send her into the sun do you want to send her off into space do you want to send her into a black hole like you have all of space out there and you can aim her. And I think where you want to shoot her will determine where you have to set it. So where do you want to send her? I want to send her wherever it will be the hardest to find her. I think basically not towards any feature. Like, I feel like, you know, if Nash was like, where'd she go? There's the sun. There's the black. Like, those are the things he'd look for first. I want to send her just an arbitrary direction into deep space where it's like there would be no clear indicator of, why I sent her that way. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Like sending her into a black hole might be impossible to get her out of, but might be impossible. Exactly. Yeah. And that and that'd be like a first lead that he might chase. Yes. Yeah. So that is no problem. You use the ship to basically chart a trajectory from the station that goes past planets and stars. And you even track it out far enough so that you can see that at times she would be pulled into part of a gravitational field to change her direction and throw her further in a different direction, but still keeping a trajectory away. Okay. Uh, as he's like sussing that out, where does that end up? Like, what is the spot where we have to leave a bomb? It is going to be the far right corner of the cloning room. Just the deepest deep into the facility, A, eh? But also right next to where you have to go, Megan. Right next door to her. <laughs> yeah, I think it's got to be a difficult place because, you know, you, you want to make her impossible to find with no hints of where she went. Um, and so that's that's a pretty dangerous place to be. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So we got our spot. Yep. Way in the way back. I'm going to pull us back into the hangar. All right. You land back inside of the hangar. And I think about this time, everybody is finished with their individual tasks. So. What's the plan? I come up from my workshop. All right, I got it. Bomb works. Where are the clones? No, oh, they they super decomposed like rapidly, like Raiders of the Lost Ark rapidly. Oh no. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is ready to go. All right. How do we want to do this, Megan? Do you need to be there to be the one to set this off? Is this something you could give one of us instructions on? No, it doesn't have to be me, but I need to go back there because I need to finish setting up the communications room so I can tell her where to be. Okay, well, is this a situation where you could just get on the mic with her, tell her, yeah, come out and take a look at stuff, and then you can just hightail it back to the hangar? No, I don't have to be there to set it off. Essentially, you, you just push this button and it'll go through like a cycle. These lights will light up, and when they're finished lighting up, the next thing that it senses, it will explode. So as long as this button is pushed and whoever arms it gets out of there fast enough, it'll just sit in that room until she walks in. And we just have that time to get out. So yeah, if somebody else wants to place it in that room, I have to be next door to set up the communication and let her know where to be. I'm struggling here between the thought of just one, maybe two people going in to deal with this. Like there's pros and cons to several of us or just one or two. Because those immortals are going to hatch anytime. Well, whoever set the timer for that, like, they're going to wake up soon, and it could be already by now. It wasn't exactly clear. Shit, I forgot about the immortals. Yeah, so if we're going to be shifting these rooms, I'm coming too. I'm coming with somebody so that 
if those things have gotten into the other hallways as these doors and stuff shift, I'll be able to keep you covered. Kim, how do you feel about setting the bomb while Megan takes care of the comms? I mean, I've run all over this station. I think I could set it and get away. Yeah, I mean, you paced me in a spacesuit, so I know you're quick. So, Jake, can you keep this thing running and literally, like, ready to soar out of here? All right, then let's move fast. We'll clear. I think we all go in together to set up Megan first so that she is getting the communication stuff set up to have this talk. Then, Kim, you and I will break off. I'll make sure that that room is clear for you. You run in, set it. I'll keep the hallways clear, and then we all run out together. Yeah, and Tess, on your timer that you've set, you think you've got about 10 minutes left. (laughs) Good. Time is now. Run, run, run. All right, as you all start to get up and move towards the exit, you feel something collide with the ship with so much force that you can actually hear the sound of metal as it is pushed backwards a few feet inside of the hangar. Whoa! What is that? That's not good. Nope. Very not good. Can we see out? Yeah, if you want to head up to the front, you can peer out. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm running with her. Same. You all move into the cockpit of the ship, and as you arrive, you see the back of someone walking away from the ship, and they stop, and they turn... And they look at you, and it's Dion. (gasps) And then just behind them, standing next to the door, is another Dion. And as you all appear in the window, that one smiles and turns off the lights. Oh my god. I'm fucking livid. Question about our ship. How do the thrusters on this thing work? Is it like like a jet engine, like shooting fire out the back type deal? Uh... I'd love for it to be. <laughs> Can it be? Because <laughs> here's what I want to do, uh-huh. is I want to hop in the pilot's seat yeah. and just get this thing a little bit off the ground and do a pass in a circle just like in neutral, but gassing it to try and just roast whatever's in here. What is your primary goal here? Is it to hit with the the engines, whatever happens to be in the immediate radius? Um, you know, you kick the engines on to really fill the room. It's going to blast you out of the station. Yeah. I I think my objective is to, like, basically get at least one, like, AOE attack in. Mm -hmm. Like, to put a little bit of hurt on all of them so that they're not all just, like, you know, primed and ready and, like, they've got the major upper hand on us. Yeah. So, if other things in the hangar also pay a price, I understand that. I'm just doing, like, a whole wash in here. Yeah, why don't you roll Act Under Fire? Yeah, okay. Seven. So, yeah, you're going to be able to do this, but there is going to be some major structural damage to the walls um, because this metal is not made from the heat deflecting metal or you're going to roast the controls that the one Dion was messing with, thus kind of negating whatever it is those control or the ship is going to take some damage. It's in a very tight space. You're doing a a sick maneuver. (laughs) End of sentence. End of sentence. (laughs) (laughs) No sick maneuver comes without a cost. Um, I like that no matter what, it's a sick maneuver. It's yeah. just oh, yeah. No matter, yeah. At, at what cost, yeah. I think I do structural damage to the walls. Okay. So <laughs> Jake hops into the pilot seat and he fires up the engine and outside you can hear two of the Dion's scream in unison. And for a brief moment, the walls around you are putting off light because they are glowing with the heat that they have absorbed. So it's not entirely pitch black in here anymore. There is this dull, thrumming red, um, and you can see movement across the ceiling and across the floor. God. I hate this thing. I'm going to go pop the hatch and see if I can spot one. All right. Roll survey the scene. Nine. All right. You get to hold one. Uh, what can help me? Like, I know I get the idea that there's some damage, so I, I yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant about where I want to start shooting <laughs> in a space station. Yeah. You know that if these are anything like the Dion that you faced before, it doesn't seem like they need to breathe. So, you know, puncturing a hole in the wall and getting rid of all the oxygen here wouldn't necessarily hurt them as much as it would you, unless you were able to do that to a section one of them was close enough to be sucked out of. But that would still create the issue of it being part of the vacuum for all of you. Sure. Then, yeah, I think I'm really trying to, like, take my time as much as I think I can here in a tent situation and like really be quiet, listen, just focus and only take a shot if I think I can see one enough to hit it dead on. What about you, Megan and Kim? 
I think I'm also with Tass with my gun trying to find one of the Dion's in the darkness. But I think I have to honor his survey the scene where I can't see anything just yet. Can Dion's in the darkness be the name of this episode, please? <laughs> <laughs> Is the red glow that's coming off the walls enough for me to see where that Dion that was messing with the lights came from? Yeah. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to like sneak? Are you trying to like sprint over? Yeah. Knowing that they can see in the dark, they don't need the lights on and that it would be way more helpful for us to have them on. I'm just trying to get there as fast as possible. All right. Roll act under fire. Four. No. Can I help? Yeah. How so? By shooting my plasma pistol. I can't see the Dion's, but I can at least fire and try to draw their attention away from where Megan is running to. Yeah, roll assist. 13. All right, re-roll your lowest die, Megan. Six. Oh! No! I think what Tass and Kim see being outside of the ship, Kim firing into the darkness trying to draw attention, you see Megan sprinting, and then you just don't see her anymore. She just vanishes into the dark. Megan? Oh, God damn it! and I'm gonna jump down and head towards her, or where I saw her last. I follow. Yeah, Tass, roll survey the scene. That is the first boxcars I've had in ages. So Yay! 13. Nice, you get a hold too. What happened here? You start to make your way in the direction where Megan was headed before she vanished, and you can see some claw marks on the ground. Uh, it seems that one of the Dion's either came from above or from the side and picked her up. You actually don't see her footprints uh, anymore. She left some footprints coming this far because of kind of the residue from the burn that Jake did. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't see that her footprints continue anymore. Okay, so then as I kind of look up and around, um, who's in the most danger? You shine your light up, and it's apparent as soon as your light hits them that it's Megan. This Dion is around her like a suit. His head over her shoulder, her body trapped inside of his torso. <laughs> Man, I'm going for this shot if I have the time. I'm going to try to shoot this thing in the face. What's your primary goal here? I want to sound like a better person mm -hmm. and say that it is to disrupt this thing enough to free her. Mm -hmm. But I want to blow its goddamn head off. All right. Roll and flick arm. <laughs> okay. I can't use intuition for a mixed. It's a seven. All right. And what is the damage on that? Four. And if I have any indication that I haven't done the job, uh, I'd love to use my old one, two and shoot again. Yeah, you don't get a sense that it's quite finished off yet because as it takes this shot from you, it opens its mouth and vomits acid onto you. Uh, you take two points of damage. This is armor defeating. Yeah. So mark a stress and two harm. All right. And I'm going to... Pull this trigger again. All right, roll inflict harm. 12. And this would be five damage in one fight. So um, instead of erasing a stress, I just don't think I take one for this shot. Okay. And what is your additional effect? I, uh, I want to give Megan a plus one forward. All right, that is perfect timing, I think. Uh, Megan, why don't you roll act under fire as this Dion that you are inside of explodes and you fall from the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> Four. Oh, my God. Oh, my yep. God. Yep. Wait, wait. Yep. Did you add the plus one forward? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Thank you. Five. Can I help? Yeah, how so? He opens the sunroof. <laughs> I, I I, fly the ship up a little bit or, like, move it underneath, like, like to yeah. let her hit something before the floor, <laughs> like, to shorten the drop. Like, rotate it to catch her on the wing. Kinda. Yes. Okay. Yeah, roll assist. Ten. All right, Megan, re-roll your lowest die. Seven. Nice. Oh God. Megan, take one point of damage, armor defeating. You fall, but you do land on the wing of the ship before rolling off onto the ground next to where Kim and Tass are. Oh. Ouch. I'm sorry. God, I'm so sorry. Do you see the other one? No, I can't see anything. It's so dark. I was trying to turn the lights on. You just hear skittering echoing around the room. Now that we've had like some blaster fire, like Jake piling the ship again, has it gotten any brighter in this room? Can we have some indication of where this other Dion is? I think it's still going to be a survey the scene, like the blaster fire is not hanging around to make the room bright. 11. All right, you get a hold too. What happened here? Yeah, we have established that there is um, 
some residue from the ship using its thrusters in here. So I think that you can kind of follow around the marks on the floor and the ceiling, and you can see which ones lead to the Dion that was just killed. Um, and you can see where the other ones stop, and they don't go any further. And you follow those marks out from the wall, and you can see that other Dion now scuttling around on the back of the ship, and it's kind of thrusting its stinger into various parts of the ship. <gasps> He's on the ship. He's on the ship. He's on the ship. Oh, boy. What can help me? We know that the Dion's don't need to breathe, but they still would be susceptible to the freezing cold of space or the heat of an atmosphere. Uh, so I think the environmental elements that come along with crawling along the hull of a spaceship uh, could be beneficial. I'm going to run back to the ship. Everybody get in. Jake, drive this thing out of here. Yeah, I was already like ready to jump up on there anyway, so I'll just jump up into the hatch and reach a hand out to gather everybody in. Yeah, as soon as I hear Kim yelling this, I'm getting inside. Yeah, Jake, everybody comes running inside the ship. Punch it! I'll fly out the bay door into space. Yeah, there isn't any roll necessary here. You have got this Dion on the hull of the ship, and you fly the ship out into the void of space, and you can hear the scuttling on the hull get slower and slower and then stop. <sighs> Fuck those things. Yeah, good God. So if we go back in, does it just thaw out or did that kill it? I don't think there's any way of knowing, but uh, hey, if it if it takes a little bit for it to defrost, that's more than enough time for you to shoot it a couple of times, right? Yeah, that's true. Either way, we have no time. We have to move. No, that's true. But he was stabbing something into the ship. Uh, I want to take a look at where that stinger was Coming through, do we see any damage? Yeah, you take some time to look around the ship as Jake is bringing it back in and docking it. The damage to the hull is not severe, but you do notice that it has gotten through like two of the three layers. So if there was to be some puncture from inside out, it might cause an issue with, you know, venting oxygen into space and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it doesn't look like the damage is that bad, but I think it would probably be a good idea to get that fixed before we get out of here. Jake, you can use some of the stuff from my workshop, but maybe would you want to work on that while we're setting things off? Sure. Yeah, I'll get this patched while you guys take care of everything else. I'm going to get out and crawl up on top to see the state of the frozen Dion. It is exactly that. He is in his scorpion form, and uh, the stinger is embedded in the ship, and his legs are also kind of dug in, but he is entirely iced over. Nice. I'm going to point blank just obliterate this thing. Yeah, you shoot it and he shatters into dozens of little pieces uh, that form into tiny Dion's. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no problem. You are able to uh, shatter him. And as you do, your watch vibrates, letting you know that your timer is up in five minutes. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.